This is Ricky Rigolato, CEO and founder of Rose Auto Services. Welcome to Cleaning and Cocktails. Hi, I'm Mark Batista. I'm president of Citywide Building Maintenance. We're a 37-year-old company located in Itasca, Illinois. We clean about 15 million square feet a night and we are a total facility solution provider. My name is Juan and I'm the owner of Spotless Cleaning Chicago. So we have a little bit over 170 employees currently. And I think the biggest thing that we love about the company is the technology that we use that allows us to stay in communication with everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Saul Marchand. I'm the founder and CEO of Blue Commercial Cleaning here in Chicago. Our goal is basically to find solutions for every client. And our mission is to really truly enhance the image of every facility we touch. Thanks guys. Enjoy the show. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. I know how busy we are. Uh, you know, being business owners, uh, the time doesn't stop, right? We, we work 24-7. Uh, but what I what I wanted to do is bring us together. You know, we're all friends, we're all colleagues. Uh, we're all in the same line of business. I wanted to really just, you know, talk shop on the industry. So, first, I mean, first question I want to talk on, because uh, there's always a topic ongoing as you go from 50 employees to 100 to 200 is uh, how, how do you guys, and I'll start, so I'll start with you, is how do you start an employee? How does the onboarding look like for a new employee for you? Well, for us, I mean, we're on the younger side of the company, so we're still almost kind of reinventing it every year, just because you have to adapt, and uh, depending on, you know, what you're gonna do every year, right? Because, you know, sometimes uh, the business model changes and so forth. So for us, um, it's more getting to know you first. Right? Do you fit the culture? Because then we can train for the skill. So for us, it's more that the interview process isn't so corporate anymore. It's just more, talk to me about yourself. Let me, let me get to know you a little bit, right? And so the interview process also consists of making sure our teammates get to know the person as well. So we bring people to understand um, who that individual is and can they be a part of that culture moving forward. And then you can start with the whole onboarding and so forth, the training and uh, obviously get him into the team. So for us, it's really getting to that person right away. Okay. Yeah. Mark. Part of the onboarding it, you know, has become such a crucial part of starting up new employees for us has been really introducing the employee to what it is exactly that they're going to be doing. Because everybody wants to work in a class A office building. Yeah. Everybody wants to work in a clean environment. Well, you know, we do some accounts where, I mean, you got to kick the drum before you clean around it to watch the rats run out at night. They're as big as dogs in the city, you know? So we want to get people on the same page and we want them to know exactly what the job is going to entail. We also do schools. So we want to make sure that we have the right type of person that we're putting into the account. We want them to know that they're going to be around kids. They're going to be around parents. And, and image is everything today, you know? It, it, you know, it takes years to build a reputation and a split second to, to have that reputation go bad. So we really um, fit the person to the job. Okay. Juan, what about you? You know, so our, what we found is in the first 30 days, we tend to have a little bit more turnover. So to reduce that, what we've done is we, by design, we've made our interview process a lot longer. And we kind of introduce them, you know, through videos and some examples of what it is they're going to be doing. We make them take an exam. And really, we kind of create these little hurdles to see how much buy-in they really have. Are they really interested? Are they really willing to go through, jump through those hurdles? Um, and usually, sometimes we have people say, you know what, this is wrong, I'm out. It was nice knowing you. But, you know, at least we get that buy-in. And then from, you know, once we do hire them, then we have a full day of training. Um, and then, we you know, we teach them to choose some of the technology, what their pay dates are going to be, because they always have questions. That's really... So then that's probably the most important thing, right? And we, we kind of forget about that. Yeah, sure. You know, so like when are you going to get paid? What, what are the expectations? Uh, and then from there we start the, you know, field training, if you will. So. Okay. Nice. So the touch back on that actually, uh, videos, right? You brought that up. I know I've talked to you about that a little bit. Uh, you guys probably all see the old school videos that are out there, right? The black and white. The, the just, you're, you're, just call them old school, right? Because it's just not modernized. It's what not kind of, too, what kind of video? Training videos. Training videos, training right? Videos. So it's it, it's tough for us because we're not we're not a manufacturing type of company, right? Where it's step one, step two, step three. These are the, this is what your day is going to look like. That's just not us. Uh, do you have you guys seen? And so you said yes. You're doing videos. So Mark, are you guys 
implementing videos in the train in the onboarding? Yeah. So for us, again, to, as the business model changes, and you know the route you want to take as far as uh, uh, the type of you services. Say route? The okay. route you want, yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> That's a plug, right? No. But um, so for us, it's uh, the videos. For we're learning a lot now. You guys understand, we're in a blue collar world, right? Mm -hmm. Blue collar industry. So a lot of these guys, it's all about vision. You know, you can only do so many bullet points, so many PowerPoint presentations. They won't get it. Yeah. So for us, it's like enough of the stock photos, enough of the stock videos. Let's get our actual people out there telling the story of what we do, and not so much about what we do as what, but about what we're about, right, and what the culture is and what the uh, need is, what solutions are we bringing to the table. So for us, that's why we always mention ourselves as technicians. We don't call ourselves janitors like or cleaners, that, yeah. period, because we are craft. We clean with a craft. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the kind of change that needs to be implemented out there. So how do you do that? Videos. Let's start showing it. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now, we're at, uh, redoing you know, all of our techniques and retraining because we're really focusing and honing in on that. Cause you know, and we, we all go through mistakes, right? We get the complaints, right? We get the issues, but how do we mitigate that? Yeah. Well, we minimize it where the QC isn't so astounding, right? When you're checking in every day or every other day. Um, and especially you guys, obviously much bigger. I, I, you guys, I'm sure, have process systems in place mm -hmm. to ensure that you guys keep that to a, to a low number. So that's what we want to do. We want to be more proactive and reactive. Yeah. yeah. Mark, what about, so to give some backdrop too, right? I mean. We've got many different levels and stages of companies here, which is which is what I want. Why I did this for a reason is it's, you know, there's a lot of a smaller SMB market of the industry. You know, for you guys to know too, some some numbers or statistics. I mean, ninety percent of the industry works at a million in revenue and under. You know, but it's not that they can't get there. It's we got to put processes from day one. You know, so that's why onboarding of employees is such a big deal, right? So, Mark, are you doing videos? So. Change is inevitable, but change is hard, right? And we're a 37-year-old company, and my father is the CEO and founder. And uh, to try and <laughs> to try and change an Italian man's ways is uh, it's tough, man. So we're not using video yet. We're still doing a lot of um, just not so much stock photos, but a lot of bullet points. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I really feel like the hands-on onboarding yeah. is the way to go. You know. The days of, the, you're right, the days of showing people these, you know, bullet points and things like that are, are kind of like the days of yesterday's. Yeah. We need more inter more interaction, you know, yeah. and and it's it's people over profit, right? Yeah. So if you're investing in your people and you're getting your people to show up to work today, it's half the battle. I mean, great, you're hired, and then they show up. You're like, all right, well, I guess I'm cleaning tonight. I don't have anything going on, but, you know. So getting them to show up, getting their buy-in. Um, getting them excited about coming to work for you that's yeah. that's really what we want to build how do we because i think it's super important the hands-on training aspect where you know a client should appreciate if we are dedicating so much time to training a, a team member you know so thoroughly and so hands-on where what, what are some ideas you guys think of or have ever thought of uh, how do we message that to a client the initial cleaning line item is not going to cover hands-on training like how it's going to be, you know, time will tell how clients will pay a higher price because we know it's only, it's inevitable, it's going to go up, minimum wage is going up. But what are some ideas you guys think of as far as how we can message to clients to, to allow us to spend more time in the beginning? Because that's when we lose contracts. That first 30 days, they go back to the other cleaning company or they just say, this is not what, you know, we, we wanted. This is too, I'm paying too much for what you guys are producing for. You know, to be honest, um, I guess, uh, I don't want to say that that's never happened to us, but you know we usually do have a contract. Um, we're also usually working with larger accounts, so the startup expenses and the is, is pretty pretty big, you know. Um, and so, with that said, is you know they understand you know we have a twenty one day startup process, um, and then you know even at that, if you know, I don't know that there's really a perfect way to mitigate that, but you know just really having good tight processes around you know what that account startup is going to look like and setting those expectations with the client is really important. So the reality is they have to know that when you come in the next day, everything's not going to be spotless. It's going to take time, right? Because the other thing is you can't train your staff on the everyday cleaning, the service checklist, the weekly items, the daily items, the monthly items, 
if you're trying to do everything in the first two, three days, right? Because yeah. you're, you're, one, you're going to scare the employees and they're going to they're gonna run. They're going to quit. You know, so so <laughs> yeah. you have to let them know that this is going to take 21 days. And to be honest, there's some accounts that are in such bad shape. I tell them up front, like, this is going to take two, three months to, you know, get this back up to yeah. speed. Yeah. You know, so they know that, you know. Yeah. So. One thing I think that's uh, beneficial is <clears throat> if you know you're going to get an account and you're 30 days out, if you are looking or recruiting for these people, if you have a pilot account or a test account that you can assign your best lead to, right, or training manager, and the training is built within your customer's building. So, I mean, you got a really nice office. I got maroon walls. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't we got seen your guys' office. We got, we got blue we got walls. Blue you know walls. I mean? <laughs> but... Um, there's always, a, there's always one or two accounts or a handful of accounts that we all have that are like, they're solid, man, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you could take your, your new recruit or your new cleaning technician and put them with the best people who serve in that account as your training manager in your training account, that's how you... That's how you start them up. But you're going to pay them for 22 days before they start the new yeah. account. Yeah. That's just investment. Good. Good. So if you could build that maybe into the cost of your training, you know, might be worth it. Okay. You know, I think for the way I look at it is that, um, I think you guys are all on the same page here, is that this industry needs a, a change. And what I mean by that is everybody's cutthroating. And that's the problem is that when people are going in there just based on numbers, Clients are automatically educated and trained to say, well, you know what, you only have two weeks, you only have a week. In their mind, they're not telling you this, but in my mind, they already know, like, if you ain't got it, then you ain't got it. How do you guys train your salespeople, or how do you get people ready to help you scale your business and bid and quote for you? It's a craft, man. You know what? Because there isn't really a set pricing out there, right? So when we talk to a lot of uh, clients, it's like, well, you need to be at 20 25 or $30 an hour. And I, I always ask, well, how'd you get that number? Well, that's kind of what we've been charged here before, right? Yeah. So the other guy did it. Right, the other guy did, did it this way. So I need you to stay in this budget. I said, well, no, that's, that's not the point, right? The point is to basically see exactly what you're looking for. So for us, it's almost like an algorithm that you can create within your business, knowing the square footage, knowing the space, exactly what the techniques you're going to utilize or the mm -hmm. type of supplies, equipment, and so forth. It's almost to a point where it's a science, right? You have your own science, you have your own science, I have my own science, you have your own science. Uh, but what dictates that price, again, goes back to how are you educating that client, right? Exactly what are you bringing to the table? Uh, we all sometimes fall into the trap because you want to get that big account, and sometimes you want to get a little aggressive with the pricing. The last thing we want to do is put pressure on our people. I think you mentioned this before, is that, or for you, is that you don't want to go in there and say, oh, man, you know what? I got to start you off at this, at this wage, right? It's all about fair wage out there. Blue collar work is really a skilled labor the way we look at it, mm -hmm. as long as you're training them right and really portraying them as a technician, almost like a partner consultant out there, because you're yeah. not just clean. Yeah. Account um, manager. Exactly. Right. So, the, you know, at the end of the day, that's exactly kind of how we do things now, is you have to explain to them first and then show that value, because otherwise if you don't, then you really are a cleaner. There you go with the $20 an hour. Yeah. Marker. So, there's yeah, different. You, said, you look serious right now. You look like you got, you got a whole game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, first of all, you got to know your verticals. What you're cleaning in commercial, what you're cleaning in schools, what you're cleaning in medical, you're going to train differently for all those, right? How do you train them? Hands up. Let them go clean. Yeah. You want to sure. know how long it takes to clean a bathroom that's three urinals, three sinks, and three stalls, go clean it and you'll never ask me again. You'll never ask me again. And you'll bid it right. And you'll bid it right, right because you'll know if you don't, you're gonna put someone else in a bad spot. And that's the difference between trying to get an account at a low price and knowing what it actually takes. That's a good point. I don't know that I can add anything else to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, it really is, it's complicated, but it really is that simple, right? There's, there's set standards, you know, there's ISSA state standards, there's BSCI, there's APA, you know, but then there's the reality, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so not only that, but then your training has to correlate with what your production rates are. And that's part of the reason why, you know, going back to the earlier question, why we have video training, right? It's not because the video training is the holy grail, but it's because in that video training, we have everything relatively standardized, right? So approximately how much time it should take for this, how much time it should take for that, these exact items that you're supposed to do in every area, what's traditionally in the scope, what's traditionally not in the scope. So that's kind of what that covers so that at least my trip, my head trainer, supervisors and filters all the way down to our technicians are doing the same thing, right? So we're all speaking the same language, right? So that, you know, if we're bidding one way, it's getting performed one way, right? Because if we're bidding, you know, with certain level expectations and then we're cleaning differently, it just is never going to match up, right? So for us, it's really standardization. Okay. So, so to piggyback on that, math is not an opinion, it's a fact, right? Yeah. So if we're building, and I mean, I know that we've built models to bid these accounts, right? But then you get into the account and you have the guy who was giving you the tour who you don't know is 20 days out from being let go from the company. And he's like, yeah, you do this, you do this, you do that. And then all of a sudden you're 10 days in and scope creep comes up <laughs> and the salesperson looks at you like, yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and I mean, we just had this happen to us. And, and it's, it's a reality. Scope creep in our industry is like, oh yeah, by the way, can you, can you put the dishes away in the dishwasher? Oh, I don't live here. <laughs> put the dishes away. Or it's going to take me 20 minutes a day. Well, 20 minutes a day times 260 days a year times, you know, yeah. whatever your rate is, it all ties back to math right. somehow. And so, you know, going back to that, you know, and that's why, you know, like here we're talking about technology, right? And going back to scope of work, training, all those things. So, you know, one of the reasons why we love using RAL is because we take pictures of all the areas and then we create that scope of work and we put all those pictures of those areas in there and in our scope of work, anything that, you know, the person that's giving us the tours mentions that's not included, don't worry about that, don't worry about this. Mm -hmm. something <laughs> we mark it down as yeah. not included, not included, yeah. not included, or it gets taken care of in-house, or whatever it may be, so that when the next person comes around, it's very clear that that wasn't included, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we have an account that we just started, it's a pretty large one, it's got like probably 30 different areas, and you know, There's just- one that you sent us the FaceTime shot? No, it's a different one. Okay. <laughs> but just you know, just just the um, just today, they're like, oh, by the way, that big admin office building that <laughs> actually is included. I forgot to show it to you guys. Wow. Can you figure it out? I'm like, no, it's like we're gonna have to yeah. price it out. It's know? only sixty thousand square feet. Just take yeah. care. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, like it's yeah. not in our scope of work. It's not in our right. pictures. Sure. So he knows that he didn't show it to us. So you know, we're in a good spot. Yeah. But you know, if, we're, if we were not detailed in that the original sure. walkthrough, then we would be in deep. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's why I mean we, we got to stress enough to anybody who's up and coming or everybody's in the business or even because really anybody could be a salesperson for for a cleaning company or a maintenance company like like ours, right? But you nailed it, Mark, too, right? Where you got you got to do the cleaning. You got to you got to learn it. You got to understand because you are going to put your people, you're going to set them up for failure if you underbid, right? And the walkthrough part, that's where like you said. You, capture every detail you know so you're talking about every expectation because what i hear people when I, whenever i'm in a cattle call it was i stopped going to those a while ago but when you when you're in a cattle call or when you're in another you know walk through with somebody else the first thing they say is let me see the scope i feel like that's the wrong thing to do because now you're why what is that scope could be 10 years old Correct. i'm running into this right now where this guy keeps reverting back to the scope the scope the scope and i'm like I didn't price the scope. I priced the facility today, you know, eight years later, with 120 new employees, right. with right. a lot more footage. Like it's, right. yeah. if you price the scope, yeah. you are losing right there. So that's a training tip, right? Is don't don't ask for the scope. Build yeah. your own scope. And you know, it's funny because, you know, I, I tell our guys is that you know what, go let, let's go, because it's our job to educate, right? You're not just going to say, true. hey, listen, because otherwise, you got to keep in mind you've got peers of ours that are going to be looking at it and learning from us yeah. with the understanding that, oh, well, these guys are helping to pave the way by educating these clients, right, to understand exactly what this all means. It's not all about pricing. Are you going to get the account? Probably not, but yeah. at least you got that little thought process going within their minds to yeah. understand that, well, you know what? That was a turnover issue I've been having the last five years. Maybe yeah. uh, 
Saul, Ricky, you know, Juan and Mark are right. Or, you know, or the other guys that are coming up, you know, in the next two to three years. Yeah. So that's kind of like the mentality we all need to start taking as well, too, is that let's start educating this industry because the industry has, has been, uh, you guys know, man, it's been plagued with a lot of undercutting, a lot of cheap labor, mm -hmm. a lot of craziness out there where people feel like that's okay to do. Yeah. That's just you know, For sure. what I see I out mean, there a lot. I mean, you know, another thing is people got to be comfortable with asking questions, like the hard questions, oh, yeah. you know, real simple. Like, what, what were the last, you know, what are you guys hiring laborers for? $17 an hour? Oh, okay. Paul, but you want me to come in and do it at 12, right? <laughs> so you got a sign That's on a your point. front lawn, man. Yeah. That's a good I mean, point. Yeah. So you guys are hiring for 17, you're looking to cut me down. And the other thing is when you get into square footage situations, okay. where like you're in small square footage situations, you know, a lot of times I ask people, you know, I'll be like, how, how many square feet is your house? Like 2,000 square feet? Yeah. Go tell your wife to clean it in an hour. Yeah. Good luck. Let me know how that works out. Good luck. <laughs> well, because you'll get a lot of people that think they know more than you, but if you make them see the aha moment, yeah. you know, if you, uh, you like, don't like enable, said, don't enable them. Ask the right questions and just let them answer. You're the so, expert, man. So no. now let's, let's, cause you were, you guys were talking about, you know, like entry level technicians that we have, you know, the, the beginning stages of people that start in our company. Now let's talk about the, the high caliber employees, you know, the employees that stand out, right? I just had an employee down the street working at a Cushman Wakefield building He's a great employee. We, you know, we, we, we love him. We take care of him. He's been with us for five years. They gave him a service recognition award, right? So he was in the second page of the magazine for the property management industry, right? Where I, I am keeping him happy as much as I can, but what, what, can, what can we you know, talk about as far as what are things that you guys are doing to take care of those all-stars? Like the the all-star employees that you start to see like, they're not, they're, they started cleaning, they help with scheduling, they go on walkthroughs, they know supply inventory. Like what, other than a title, what are things that we can do? So, you know, honestly, I think one of the benefits of growing at a, at a decent clip is you create manager roles, you create assistant roles, you create so on and so forth, right? And so, honestly, sometimes it's, it's hard to, pull a good employee away from the count uh, because we're like, wow, they're not going to be happy if I pull away a good employee. That's my situation. Man. This guy doesn't right. leave that, that yeah. <laughs> but, but, the, but the reality is it shouldn't be dependent on the employee. It should be dependent on your systems and your training. You should be able to get another employee and train them pretty close to, to perform to the same level, right? Mm -hmm. And then you should be able to take that employee and promote them, right? Because otherwise you don't have a sustainable model and you can't really scale, right? Okay. So that's, I guess that's the way I try to think about it. Um, because it, the reality is if you don't, then you're almost penalizing the employee for doing such a good job because now he's stuck. He's stuck out of the cup. Right, yeah. which is, yeah. I mean, it really doesn't make sense. I mean, being able to replace yourself is the number one way to grow. Yeah, exactly. It's the number one, I mean, you know, we're it's, at It a, should be a compliment. Right. We're at a point right now where, you know, we, we just, we had to do this. So I just hired a vice president for our company and I can't wait because mm -hmm. he's, you know, they always say if you're the smartest person in your company, then you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. Well, this, this guy is, he is on point and, and we're talking C-level employees versus cleaning technician employees and all stars. And I think at that level, and no matter who you're dealing with, you have to do what you're going to say you're going to do, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, money talks, BS walks, right? Yeah. Okay. And number three, the recognition does go a long way. Okay. If you're going to promote somebody and pay, but not give them the authority to be a manager and to make managerial changes mm -hmm. and yep. and empower that person, to do, to make the hires, to make the fires, to do the, you know, to, to have all those responsibilities, you're gonna kind of deflate the promotion. Yeah, per se. That's a great point, man. You know, I, 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 if, if, because then they feel like, why am I, you know, why did I get promoted or why did I get this new title? If I have no authorities, 
not that it, it could people have different personalities people people operate differently but if they feel they have no authority then it's like well, what, what, what? they what? may be getting the money but if they are looking for interpersonal interpersonal growth there's nothing less deflating than paying him the money and having the role stay the same. Yeah. And that's something that we had to learn because, you know, coming from a family business, it's tough to oh. get the one person that has built the whole thing to be able to let go a little bit and, and give the power to someone else to be able to, you know, be in, in, in an in authority yeah. in the company. Family business is a whole other episode. Yeah. Yes. I, empowering is huge. You know, I think, uh, you know, as a small business owner, when you start, you always, you want to empower people and let them do what they want to do, but you're always keeping your hand in that jar for some reason, right? So the one thing I've taught myself and just kind of keep training myself to do is always asking them, what would you do for the situation, right? Because 90% of the time, I guarantee it's going to be the same answer I'm going to give you. So a lot of the guys, a lot of the girls now, everybody is now starting to think on their own. So we always talk about think independently, right? What would you do? Yeah. It's okay if you fail. It's yeah. fine. Learn from it and move on. So for us, uh, you know, definitely empowering and uh, giving people the opportunity. Because at the end of the day, again, I go back to this whole blue collar environment, blue collar solution. You know, people that come walking through that door have they've never been given opportunities. Yeah. Let's just be honest, right? And so it's our job to understand them, where they're coming from, be patient, but also making sure that you know they're they're here for the long term. And also, what's your vision? What's your mission? What yeah. exactly is the purpose of your company out here? Because it's not here just to clean, yeah. right? So uh, as long as you portray that and what your company is doing, everybody will fall on board. Last year for us, we were trying to scale a little more aggressively. I learned a lot. Yeah. The company learned a lot. You know, we were trying to go a little too top heavy. But as they always say, you know, get better before you get bigger. And by getting better is by empowering your employees, investing in the training your employees. Awesome. We, Exactly, processes, systems, and making sure that everybody's set up for success. Yeah, that's a great, an, another good segue, right? Because I want to talk about culture, but the empowerment part, that's something that it, it sits big with me. But I have a lot of family that works in my business, right? But the when you let somebody own something, like the question, right? We all said, if you ask the employee, what would you do? Like you said, they're like, what? You're, at, you're asking me? They're, yeah, yeah. Like, here, let's let's put this on the whiteboard. Let's whiteboard this session and, and talk about what would you do in this position to help the company. They start to feel ownership. That's getting into culture now, right? I want to talk about everybody's culture. Is for me, is giving people roles and responsibilities that own their department or own that skill set that they're in charge of. I've got a floor department. I've got a post construction department. These guys operate cohesively on their own. I may step in every couple weeks just to say, hey, what's going on? Are we, are we doing good? It looks like we're doing good. Numbers look good. Yeah. Uh, but they own it. They sit there. They do their own 10, 15 minute powwows. They have an agenda. They send the agenda to us in an email. It's like, it's amazing actually to let them kind of spread their wings and say, and, and this is one thing, you know, I don't know if you guys do this too, but I tell them if shit hit the fan and the janitorial department fell apart and closed, could your department does it have legs? Could you guys operate on your own? Mm -hmm. They're confident. They're like, yeah, I, we, we, we need you, Rick. We need support, but we got it. We could actually keep going on our own. So I feel like that's now leading into culture is what are you guys doing differently? Or what are you guys doing to improve your culture? I see a lot, you know, you saw what you're doing awesome on social media. Juan, I know you're doing a lot of the digital videos. Mark doesn't like social media, so I don't know. Let's like, <laughs> <laughs> get the program, man. Yeah. Let's go. This, guy's got, this guy's got a million square foot schools to take care of. All right. But like, well, yeah, let's talk about culture of the company. What are, what are we all doing? Not that we have to be doing different things, but what are we doing? Sure. What are, what's everybody doing? Well, uh, for us, it's, again, being on the smaller side, so we have to get, we have to get it right now, right? Uh, being a smaller firm under 30 people, but for us now is, is, is we always say we're cleaning that cares, right? Um, and the one thing that we do in house now, and, we're, and I'm really hunkering down and really pushing is, is you have to care. You have to communicate with each other, right? It's very important. You gotta hold each other accountable. 
right? Because you're not going to have a set of eyes behind you at all times to see what you're doing, what your mm -hmm. quality is like. You've got to be reliable. Rely on each other. Help each other out. And at the end, strive for excellence. So it stands for care. And we always say you've got to care. Because it's not so much just in business, but that's life. And so when you start digging in deep and you start telling people and talking to people in that route, they really start honing in and say, No, oh, two. No, it's two times. He said route. Two times. He said so you know once you you dig deep and you start building that because it, it is it's, it's it's what you just said it's people over profit and you got to hone in on that you know and that includes us as business owners you know what are we doing let's look let's look at ourselves are we out there actually pushing it are we portraying ourselves to be that or are we just saying it yeah. so you know for me as a smaller company it might be a little easier i'm sure it's a little harder for you guys a couple hundred people out there uh, but that's exactly what we're trying to do, and I'm probably speaking more of those guys that are up and coming, is that build that now, build it now, strong, because those guys are going to be basically the tentacles, right? It's going to be spreading, and once it spreads, the minute a person comes in and doesn't stand for that, I'm not the one making the decision yeah. to let them go. It's our own staff. Yeah. So that's really what we're doing, we're pushing, and uh, that's what we're focusing on right now. It's so important. It's so important. To have, whether you're a big company or a small company, you should, even if you're a big company, you should live with a small company mentality. Yeah. Everyone matters. That comes to your customers, that comes to your employees, that comes to everyone, your vendors, everyone. Make a friend, make a sale, right? How many people can we help every day? We're not here to clean toilets. We're here to provide a solution that otherwise would someone would have to go fulfill themselves, which they don't want to do. Yeah. They just don't yeah. want to do it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're, we're in a recession proof. Ah, close to recession close to, proof. No, it's recession yeah. proof. Which it's is close to. I mean, you know, like I said, if you worry about creating a solid business, the rest will come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Juan, what do you got going on? You know, that's, that's so true. You know, it's going back to culture. You know, one of the issues, it, it's a good thing, but sometimes it's a little bit of an issue is when, when every got a new employee and, you know, let's say you have five people in that building, you know, you've got four rock stars and you put someone else in and that person's just not putting in the effort or they're, sometimes they'll, in chatter, they'll say, I'm just here for my paycheck. Yeah. It's you the know, worst line. You know, so the thing is, <laughs> you know, how much, how much <laughs> do you guys pay? Yeah. Right. I don't even know so, you. <laughs> So my other employees or supervisors will say, hey, you know what, this person, we can't have them. But you know, and I understand it completely, and so I have to take action at that yeah. point, right? So, so the culture maintains a certain level of standard, you know, certain standard, right? Um, and that's important because, you know, they're, they're also worried about their jobs because they understand that if we lose the building, they all lose their jobs, you know? So culture is very important, having set standards, you know? But again, you know, it already goes back to having everything standardized so everyone understands what they're supposed to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was, going back to the videos, is one of the reasons why I created them because I realized that one supervisor was training with a different standard, the other mm -hmm. one had different methods, and so at least now we're all working cohesively. And, and you know, when it comes to employees, whether you have 10, 15, 100, 200, you know, the sys our systems today are so good that we can keep track of all this information. You know, it matters. It matters that what is it to a company that's doing you know, 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 15, 20 million, to reach out to, you know, let's say five, 10 employees in a month and say, happy birthday, we appreciate you. Yeah. Here's yeah. a $10 gift card for Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yeah. Or even think about this. When was the last time you went on a bid or you put a proposal together and you didn't win, but you still sent the customer a handwritten note? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. There might have been five bidders there. You might have lost. But if things go south, who do you think they're going to remember? Yeah. yeah. No, and I mean, touching on the saying happy birthday, saying thank you, right? So we, we try to do that all the time. But one thing we, we actually did this year is I hired a chief people officer, right? So I took a page right out of chief heart officer. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's took a page off the, out, out of the technology company and the industry and the trend of where they're going where this guy's sole responsibility is to get out there at 8 o'clock at night, 2 in the morning, 1 in the morning, 6 in the morning, 
arrive with donuts, say yeah. thank you, bring them a piece of, a, a, not just, the, you know, we have area managers and supervisors that show up at night, yeah. but this guy's sole job is to rem, let them know and remind them, you're, you know, you don't, we don't see you in the office, we don't see you all the time, we remember you, we, we recognize you, we, this is not a tough, this is a tough job that you're doing, so this guy, you know, when I hired him too, he was like, well, Rick, I'm a recruiter, I'm, you know, I'm HR, you know, but, but I'm like, trust me, this is going to go a long way because as much as, you know, me as a company too, I think I have a great culture, I have a great office, I have a good, I still got employees that they're frustrated. Wow. You know, they're, they don't come to the office, so they don't, they don't get to see or, and yeah. reap the benefits from that. And it's like, oh, you forgot about me. That's, that's like, huge, oh, man, man. you trying to do so much. As you grow, it just gets so hard. Hey, it's I hard mean, it that. just gets, and there's always going to be people that, you know, people that feel like they're getting left out, you know. I mean, it's 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 inevitable to the point where if you're in the hundreds, two, three, four, five hundred. Yeah. I mean, these, these things are going to happen. But yeah. as long as you're showing effort, I feel like that's that's <clears throat> the point is to show some effort. But you know, going back to empowerment. So one of the things I actually did recently is, so every month I give supervisors a hundred dollars a month. I give them two fifties. So every month they have to select two people, you know, that have their building in top shape. Or their heirs and so you give them money for that, and they yeah. reward them directly. Okay. So I don't even do that. So it's not even for because me. at the end of the day, I'm not that's on cool, the field. That's, that's, that's cool though. That it's coming like yeah. Yeah. it's better for them. And it's better. Yeah. They're gonna, yeah. You talk so about they power, respect that's, it's, direct it's management. Yeah. Right. That's above the. I mean, I like that's, that actually. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. Take a note. That's really good. I took that from the mob movies. You know, walk around with money. It's like here you go. Here you go. Good. You know, it seems to work for them. You know. So. <laughs> All right, so on the laughing side, I wanted to end with this note because everybody definitely has some funny stories. Tell me about a time that you were in the field that you guys said, what the hell did I get myself into? What, you know, what the hell is, why did I do the cleaning industry? Why did, you know, what's some good stories from you guys in the field? You know what? For, I got a few, but I'm going to cut it real quick. Is that, you know, when I first started, um, you know, obviously for me is uh, I put, I pretty much invested everything that I had into this business. I didn't have any backup money. I had nothing. I had no clue about cleaning. I still uh, have I, it. I <laughs> And so, uh, you know, the one, the craziest things that I always saw was just, uh, um, I will throw up the shit, the crap, especially at bars, right? Yeah. Nighttime clubs, whatever. But it's, 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 mm-hmm. this is the funny part to it is that, all right, I'm like, oh man, this is crazy, but we got to do it. 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 I went and because we're having a new QC person that's going to take over all of our training. So she's like, I need you to meet me here at five in the morning and we're going get to the, get the techniques down. I said, okay, perfect. Let's go. Dude, what's the first thing I see, man? Is shit with an underwear in a toilet. <laughs> and I look at it, I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm back on. at this again. <laughs> you know? But luckily, uh, Isabel's great. She just went out and she's like, don't worry, so here's, here's the technique. And dude, that technique, honestly, took her 10 seconds compared to my 30 minutes yeah. when I did that, you know, five years ago, yeah. which is kind of crazy and sick. And so that's why, Isabel, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, you are. The neck, you're our rock star. Yeah. She's going to really be pulling uh, all the great training for us. So anyway, my story is just, it's funny that it, it's never going to stop. It's always going to be. It's always going to be. You right. know, I think it's just the, the comedy of the day-to-day, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no matter how long you do this, there's always something that amazes you. Like, just yesterday, my GM sent me a picture. It was like 7 o'clock. And... This account that we clean, okay, someone decided to, that they were going to use the bathroom in a special way. <laughs> and um, See, it's always these bathrooms. Man. Basically, <laughs> she, sends me, she sends me a picture of these people and they're dressed up like, like they're Martians, like in space suits. I'm like, what happened in the bathroom? <laughs> like, what happened, you know? Aww. But, I mean, I think we could all share yeah. our fair... Our, our, our fair share of stories like that. One that sticks out for me is just our mechanic. Our mechanic is just, you know, he's been with us for 20, 22 years. Oh, that's awesome. And he's kind of a rough dude, awesome. you know? Yeah. 
you know, he's, he's helped me move my house a couple times. I've had to patch some walls. But just recently, like, we had to deliver a machine because this, this particular company had a, <laughs> they had a customer event going on. Well, he's not in tune with the fact that they have a customer event. So he takes this 32-inch walk behind, and he goes <laughs> up this ADA ramp because our, our, awesome. the, the, dock height didn't, the dock height dock didn't match up with our truck. So here he is going to this all-glass building, trying to open the doors. There's, there's customers all over this building. So <laughs> the, the facility manager comes out and is like, no, no, no. You know, he's halfway in the door yeah. with this 32 inch walk behind, you know, ready to walk it right through the lobby. Just <laughs> clueless, man. But, you know, there, there, there's so many things yeah. that, that, that come to mind for this, for this topic. Yeah. Wow, what do you got? Oh, wow. I, you know, there's, there's endless stories, but I think the most interesting one was we're at, a, at, a, at nighttime, the supervisor calls me and, Hey, you know, there was uh, two employees of the company, and they, they were in an X-rated act. So, <laughs> you know, they got scared, and they, you know, they took off. But now I'm cleaning the office that they were in, and, you know, there's cocaine on the damn oh, desk. Oh, like, wow. What do I do? That's, that's like, a story, dude. What do I do? Guy, so, story. I'm like, I don't know. Like, can't call a cop. Right? <laughs> you know, like, you know, I don't want to get the client in <laughs> trouble. get the client in trouble. So I call a facility manager, and he's like, He's pissed that I'm calling him, you know, but you know, it's kind of a delicate matter, right? Yeah, so, yeah, you know, and uh, he's like, well, can't you vacuum it up? I'm like, all right. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, vacuum you know? it up. So <laughs> that's what we did. I mean, we vacuumed it up. and With a vacuum. With a vacuum. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> exactly. With a vacuum and, yeah. you know, threw it in a trash bag and out in the garbage, you know, because, you know, she's like, well, I don't want to take this trash bag with me. I was like, no, throw it in the, you know, throw it in the garbage because, you know, it's like, but yeah, anyway, so. There's all kinds of stories, you know. Oh, so. I got yeah. endless stories. That yeah. commercial account with the rats like dogs, that's a true story for oh, sure. I can imagine. I mean, you kick the barrels. I mean, the, <laughs> it's the middle, of the, they're as big as dogs. I mean, <laughs> and, and I just had a meeting with these people recently, and I told this new facility, she's the plant manager. I was like, you been here at night before? She's like, no. Of course not. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> maybe, we should, maybe we should show you one night what we're dealing with. Because they're like, you know. Talking about they probably have the little traps. <laughs> <laughs> you need a cage. You need a yeah, cage. You know. you need a yeah. Rick, what's the story for you? Uh, man, I got a lot. I've, I've talked about many, but I'd say one that could be probably relevant to a lot of you know newcomers or up and coming. Me and my cousin, our first year of business, you know, stripping wax shops. I'm sure all of you guys have done. I did saw some pictures. You told me about this. Do it. So I talk about this because it's. It's a classic. It's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic story for me where, you know, we, we bid this job. I think I know what I'm doing because I looked on YouTube and I looked at, you know, the tips <laughs> the tips on how to, how to price. And my cousin's all like, yeah, Rick, dude, we got a new machine. We're good. This, they say the machine could do the job for you. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so we bid this job at like 600 and, man, like 680 bucks, I think. And it's like 3,000 square feet. And it's it's an overnight, but it's a 24-hour facility. And I, I don't know what stripper is. You know, I, I don't know what I didn't, I didn't know you're supposed to do. What kind strippers, of shoes right? did you have? Like? I had gym shoes on. Like, oh dude, wow! Like, so I had, I had gym shoes. Like we got the floor scrubber. We got what I thought was a wet vac, but it was not a wet vac. <laughs> and, then I, and then and then we have the stripper solution. And then we have the wax. And then we have a brand new square scrub. This thing's like it's shiny. So then Tony goes up to the top. I'm like, all right, I got the bathrooms. You got the top. And he just keeps going. And I'm like, dude, Tony, from the YouTube video, you're supposed to do like one over. Like, he keeps going. He keeps. And I go up and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, Rick, it, it just keep, there's film. There's just film everywhere. Oh so he keeps going. And I'm down here. He comes out because we're just, you know, he's judging me. I'm judging him. I'm better than him. He's better than me. He bought that machine. I bought this one. I'm at the bottom, and he's like, Rick, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm just, you know, I'm throwing the liquid everywhere. I'm just throwing the chemical. Stripper? There you go. And he's like, Rick, you it's, all, it's, all, it's all stripper. Yeah. He's like, you're supposed to dilute it. Dude, the, the tile turned white. Boom. White. So then I'm like, oh, shit, all right, cool. So I start stripping it, start stripping it. The entire <laughs> outer layer was white, like gone. There's no tile. This was a brown tile. So it's gone. <laughs> it's <a> brown tile. <laughs> Up on top. The, you know, whatever, whatever happened up top. But just so you guys know, 
we bid this job for eight hours. Boy, it's we, were, we were there for 38 yeah, hours. Oh, yeah. Two days. Oh, two days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the client came in like, great job. <laughs> this thing <laughs> this thing looks fantastic. Because we put nine coats of wax on that thing. It was the shiniest foil I've ever seen in my life. You literally, you literally I took paid the, them for it, three exactly, years of wax. Exactly oh, three years of wax, job. You literally said, I'm going to lose money to make money. Later. Yeah, yeah, dude. Exactly. They were like, this, this is the best looking floor we ever awesome. had. And me and Tony were like, all right. So, they so that price is good, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do not price that job. Three thousand square feet, six eighty? No, no, not happening. But I got so many more. But at that point, I think we've talked enough, right? I think we had some good, job, good conversations yeah. here. Oh yeah. Um, for for our first talk, I think you know we wanted to keep it real. We wanted to keep it, you know, this is storytelling time, right? This is this is what the industry is about. Is collaboration. You could, you know, people could call us competitors because we're on the same market, but these guys are my friends. These guys are colleagues. This is what we need to do for the industry, not just for us, but for customers and clients to know this is a trade. What we do for commercial cleaning is a trade. We, we, we're not demanding respect, but we, we, we have to say, let's put ourselves in a situation to earn our clients' respect by the way we conduct ourselves uh, and the way we... You know, we take this serious, right? I mean, I, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you guys being a part of this. This is only the first of many to come. Uh, but, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys being here. But Cheers, Cheers to cheers. Clean and Cocktails. Cheers, yeah. Clean, clean and, and cocktails. cocktails. Salute. Yes.